It's been a few years since I used a virtual reality headset. I owned the original HTC Vive back in 2016. It was my pride and joy. And as you may know, the HTC Vive was one of the first on the market that made VR accessible and real. Furthermore, it had amazing support from Valve and still does to this day. I even purchased the wireless upgrade in 2019 via a friend from the States, since it wasn't available in Australia at the time. I paid nearly double the price plus shipping, but it helped me to take my Beat Saber skills to the next level. However, the amount of effort to set up the HTC Vive was always a drag. It had two mechanical light boxes, which I drilled into my walls to maintain the room configuration, but they also had to be wired together. The resolution was low with pretty average screen door effects. Tracking was spot on though, I'll give it that. Field of view was tiny, but wireless was great, even with the reduced quality as the module reached grilling temperatures. With all of that in mind, the HTC Vive era was incredibly fun, even with the short demo-like games that were there back in the day. But it all changed when Half-Life Alex was released. This game was and is a defining moment for VR. In 2021, after thousands of hours and dollars, the five years of solid enjoyment came to an end, so I sold it and moved on but the memory persisted in the dozen of games in my Steam library that I see every time I open up Steam. Now, all this to say that I love VR and I was so excited when Pimax reached out to send me their VR headset for review. I get to relive all these exciting games and see what 2024 brings to the VR world. So friends, this is the Pimax Crystal Light, the latest VR headset on the market, promising the next generational leap in the VR experience. But what's the catch? Well, let's find out. Big thanks to Pimax for sending this for review. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you would like to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. Let's get started by rolling the intro. Let me tell you how the Pimax works. There are no light boxes here anymore. The Pimax Crystal uses four ultra wide cameras embedded in the front plate of the headset for inside out tracking, which means in the box you get the headset, two controllers, a power adapter, USB cables, and the main arterial cable. Um, that of course goes to your PC and that's it. This package makes for the setup to be plug in and play. After charging the controllers, the Pimax works with Steam VR. So Valve is the one maintaining the lead VR application with Pimax sort of piggybacking onto Steam VR, which in my mind is great when you have a billion dollar company managing the core code of the platform that you run on. Pimax does have their own software that manages the settings of the headset updates and even has a game store and a VR menu that you can sit inside. Once set up, the headset comes alive really quickly. I ran into no connectivity issues. I plugged in the power and started Steam VR. And the game was on. But before I tell you about my experience, let me provide you with the hardware specifications because I think it's quite important. So each eye has an ultra sharp resolution of 2,888 pixels by 2,888 pixels with local dimming on its QLED panels. In the lenses, they are aspheric and provide a really large sweet spot of clarity in the center. More importantly, the pixels per degree sit at 35 ppd, where my old faithful Vive was 9.81. So comparably though, normal human vision sits between 60 to 120 ppd, where 120 ppd is kind of like super vision. What's interesting is that your driver's license would be revoked if your vision drops below 30 ppd. So the Pimax capability to represent 35 ppd vision is amazing. So all in all, it provides a 150 inch horizontal FOV compared to my old Vibe, which was 98 inches. So you get to see much more in your field of view with a slight caveat. There is no tracking in the light version, which means there's no smart foveated rendering. This is a type of rendering where the headset works out where your eye is looking and renders that section in high quality rather than the full screen to save on PC resources. This is great for frames per second and makes for a more natural way of looking around with your eyes. 
However, the crystal light fixes the foveated rendering in the center, which means it's always there wherever you're pointing your head, but not your eyes. It does take a little bit to get used to, but honestly, after a little while, it's absolutely fine. Furthermore, the adjustment for your interpupillary distances is manual, ranging from 58 to 72 millimeters. The refresh rate of each panel is variable from 60 hertz, 72, 90 hertz, and an incredible 120 hertz, which enables extremely smooth gameplay if your rig can handle it. Speaking of rigs, I'm running an RTX 1490 and an AMD 7950X CPU. And for context, the minimum requirement specifications are at RTX 2070 equivalent and a 12th generation Intel Core i5 equivalent. So bear that in mind as this headset has a pretty high entry point. The camera pass-through provides a funky matrix-like view if it was a grayscale vision of your surroundings, which is needed often enough as you navigate the play space carefully due to the arterial cable being only five meters. I would suggest getting a longer cable from Pimax store to manage the tugs on your head as you move around in games that require a lot of movement. Speaking of, the head strap is very, very nice and wide, providing a very good balance between the heft of the device at the back and, of course, the front. The face cushions are really comfortable, much better than any other VR headset I've tried on, as it does not leave an impression on your face. However, there is a drawback of a snug fit that may only happen for those with larger heads. So to that end, the lens tends to fog during a particularly warm gaming session. So bear that in mind that you might need to keep a little cloth near you to just give him a wipe every so often. Now it fits really well on my face and I don't get any light bleed due to its snug fit. To me personally, this is by far the best VR headset I have ever used for comfortability, enabling some really long gaming sessions. Lastly, the controllers that I keep flinging around here. They are very functional and light, but they also feel a little bit cheap. They seem like an afterthought in the whole scheme of things compared to the headset and do not really match the level of quality you find there. The triggers are mushy and not very satisfying. The top buttons are okay, but they feel plasticky, like they could break at any second. They just seem more like prototypes, but they work. Interestingly, they have touch sensors on the X buttons and triggers, which would work well if the controller has had some sort of strap on them that held it to your palm and they don't go fling, so I can be light with my touch. With all that out of the way, let me talk about my experience using the Pimax for the last couple of weeks. Now, visually in VR, the Pimax Crystal Light and its QLED panels are stunning. There is nothing quite like the moment you boot it up in your first game and the Pimax just shines. Mine was Half-Life Alex, and it was incredible. The clarity of the environment, the details up close and at distances, it was just wild. I could suddenly see things that, well, I couldn't see before. The resolution of the Pimax panels took my VR experience to another level but the 120 hertz refresh rate provides absolutely smooth animations and the movement, which means, well, means no feeling of sickness. Not that I had any before, but the high refresh rate made it feel more lifelike. My movements were sharp and on target, which really showed when playing Pavlov, the Counter-Strike-esque VR shooter. Highly recommend, by the way. What I realized quickly is that Pimax is the perfect headset for watching movies in VR. Using Steam's big screen beta VR app, the high resolution headset comfortability and high quality speakers made for a very meaningful experience. Then there is the local dimming capabilities that set it apart and turn it up a notch. You see, when watching any movie on any TV, dark sections in the film still have some light coming through from the LED panel in the background. While OLED does away with this because it's individual pixels that light up, the Pimax has a solution where the backlit LED local array will dim based on the content. And this gets very close to OLED, but obviously, at a much lower cost. So coming back to gaming, once I removed the dust from my VR library, I got to relive the greatest hits 
of the last five years, with some new highlights like No Man's Sky and VR, then of course Beat Saber and the latest update, the Labs Archery Project Cars with a Logitech wheel, Raw Data, Arizona Sunshine, Elite Dangerous, Super Hot Boneworks, MS Flight Simulator, more on that in a second, and Pistol Whip DCS and Budget Cuts. Budget Cuts, I absolutely love it. It's such a fun game to play. From a Pimax point of view, the standout games and those I would say fit this hardware are Elite Dangerous, Project Cars, and Flight Simulators, of course, DCS. However, let me be clear, Half-Life Alex is the best VR game to ever come out so far. At four years old, there is nothing really out there. At the moment, at its scale, capability, fun, and pure VR epicness. That's not to say I have not had any good experience with other VR games, but here's the thing. With the Pimax Crystal Light, I was able to lose myself in the VR experiences. So, well, all good then, right? Pimax Crystal Light is the bee's knees. And we can move on. Well, not quite. Let's jump into the things I found a bit annoying. The image is sharp. That is a core benefit of the Crystal Light. The sharpness stays near the center of the panel. And when you look around, you feel like you're losing just that slightest of focus and only to turn your head towards the object and gain the center of sharpness again. The takeaway here is clarity of the image, amazing colors, wide FOV and high refresh rate. But what's not so great is the tracking. I had a few moments where the headset lost movement tracking and the VR image froze making me feel really weird in the head. Yes, only for a second or two and it was very rare but it happened enough times to be a pain. The point being, it could be my PC or it could be some bad code, but it's something I have never seen happen with outside in tracking. And so it comes to these, the controllers in the game. They're not steady at all. They shake like crazy in VR. Even if your arms are steady, when I was using the light boxes with my HTC Vive, the controllers in VR were as steady as my arm. I could twist them, move them around, and it would be absolutely fire. By far, this is the most disappointing part of my experience and probably why there is the optional light boxes for purchase. Now, if you haven't already guessed, the cameras are only in front of the device. The moment you move your hands with the controllers behind that field of view, the controllers are lost, which makes archery games pretty much impossible if you've got to pull it back far and aim at something because the control isn't even seen there. In saying all that during a game like Microsoft Flight Sim, you won't notice it as everything is moving and it's all very fluid and all the action is in front of you. But try something like big screen mode where you navigate your desktop with the controllers and try pressing a little icon on the screen. It becomes very difficult as you try and aim for it. Precision just goes out the window. Also, you need to make sure you're in a well relit room. A dark, shiny room will make tracking even worse. The arterial cable, this is also a pretty significant drawback of obviously a wired VR, especially when you want to stand up and just go wild. That cable is fairly thick and it hangs and puts a bit of weight on the back, causing a little bit of strain if you're moving around. You get used to it and you kind of know when to move it around and it takes away from the immersion of being in VR. But I do understand that this is the best way right now to get a high resolution, low latency and high refresh rate to your eyes. So final thoughts. The Pimax Crystal Light is a high quality VR headset with visual capabilities that will blow you away. It has some physical limitations, the cable and its tracking is a little bit glitchy, but both can be swept under the rug due to the overall hassle-free experience in regards to booting things up. And when you do boot up something like Microsoft Flight Sim and turn on Nvidia DLSS, max out all the graphics, jump into a F-16 fighter jet, take a tour of your own city through the skies, that is when the Pimax Crystal Light really shines and it all makes sense as to what this product is for. So here's the thing, at $13.99, it's probably not a headset for first time users. So here is my recommendation, who it's for. It is for someone who loves VR, flying, trucking, racing, and the whole sim category for long periods of time and for those who want to watch movies on the big screen without having a big screen.
Links below for more information. Big thanks to Pimax for sending the headset for review. Absolutely amazing technology, and I think it will sell very well in the Sim Arcade area. So make sure to tap the like button if you like this video. It is rather long, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. And subscribe if you want to support us and see more content like this. Thanks for watching, catch you in another one. Bye.